What is your name? Baby. Your name's Baby. B-A-B-Y, Baby. B -A -B -Y -Baby. <laughs> Like apparently everyone that's seen it, I really enjoyed Baby Driver. It's a refreshingly inventive take on the heist film and perhaps most impressively for me, is one of the few films of recent memory that really attempted to bring something new to the table both in general of its use of music, but also technically in regards to its car chase sequences that make up most of the film's action. Car chases are a staple of action cinema and have gone through periods of evolution since the 60s to reach where we are today, for better or worse. They're safer to pull off now and perhaps easier, but also for me less physically impressive and generally not handled as well in regards to cinematic language as they were in the 70s heyday of this sort of scene. Two things for me are important when it comes to a car chase. How you answer these questions is how you set up whether you're going to end up with something memorable or forgettable. Questions? Why you do it and how you do it. Why have a car chase in your film? Is it there just for excitement? To inject some adrenaline? Or is it there for a narrative reason? A car chase needs to mean something to the story and the characters. Why are they putting themselves and others in danger? In Ronin, which has some of the finest car chases ever put to the screen, the first chase is to show the talent of those within the team. The script sets up that they will only do this job if they have access to some very specific equipment and that they work together well as a unit. Later, the second chase is free of all that technology and they don't really get to choose their cars and the team has splintered. This chase is to show how far things have come, the position our characters are in. Chases can really help us as an audience understand where our characters are and the obstacles they are willing to face and overcome. If they are putting themselves in this position, where are they at mentally? How desperate are they to escape the police or pursue a criminal? Collateral damage and sheer danger comes into play here. Do your characters avoid pedestrians and just try to outrun the police or do they have no care or even contempt for others on the road? You can show how bold or brave or desperate and perhaps even stupid your characters are by their willingness to go into the chase and then how far they take it. William Friedkin is the master of this. His cops increasingly cause so much damage and have so little care for others on the road. As the chases go on, they cause real destruction in their quest for their perps. These aren't just exciting physical feats but important development stages for the characters. They cross a line and are changed in our eyes from the chase onwards. And this takes me to the other question I mentioned, of how you do your chase scene. Friedkin let the car in French Connection barrel down multiple blocks without permits, narrowly avoiding real traffic to create that sense of urgency. The chase felt real because it was real. In Blues Brothers, John Landis filled a mall with stunt people and then had the cars drive through it. There weren't any optical effects or overcutting. It simply happened. Am I saying this is how chases should be filmed? God, no. I actually think as much as I love The French Connection and Friedkin as a director, if that is how he genuinely filmed that chase, we should be careful to celebrate it. Safety is paramount when it comes to chases, and that's why I hasten to completely write off modern action cinema and just consider the 70s as the car chase golden age. Yes, this looks amazing, but god damn was it dangerous. The problem is for me now that in chases becoming safer, which is of course a good thing, filmmakers have gained too many tools to allow them to do whatever they want within a chase. Realism has sort of gone out the window, even if the intended aim is still to keep it relatively real. Limitations made chases, in my opinion, more effective. In the 70s and early 80s and even in films like Ronin, the chases felt real as generally they were simply doing only what they could possibly do. Stars did as much of the driving as they could, I mean look at De Niro here. He might not actually be driving but he's in the front of the car and you can see it on his face. Same for Baby Driver. Those stars did at least some of the driving and were in some of the stunt controlled cars. In the great chase sequences, the cars are driven around real traffic, on real streets, with real backgrounds passing by the windows. 
Now though, due to positive changes like the inclusion of photoreal CG cars on the streets and simply better stunt cars enabling precision driving, and the perhaps less positive changes such as over-reliance on green screen and over-editing, chase sequences have begun to enter an uncanny valley space, where though it might look possible, it just doesn't feel possible. And so because of that, it doesn't feel as exciting. Everyone knows how it is to be in a car. We know how it feels to push or even go over the speed limit, how it is to get slightly too close to another car or be cut off dangerously. That jump in your stomach, that sudden shock, that anger. There was a cinematic language developed back in the day that led to chases really feeling dangerous even when they weren't so much. Sitting in POV, seeing another car come close, each hit should be a story in itself. The build-up, the shock, the aftermath, and if there isn't so much of a build-up, if another car comes out of nowhere, then it still should be handled in its own way. Look at this. There was no shock when that car appeared, as even when it's supposed to be a surprise, there needs to be a certain rhythm to the editing around it for it to work. Here, through the rhythm of the editing, when the car appears, how long we hold on the reaction, and the intended feeling of shock is created perfectly. Now go back to rhythm. That word is so important. I mentioned geography briefly a minute ago, but geography in a car chase sequence is less important than rhythm and flow. It's what George Miller understands perhaps better than anyone, and perhaps why Baby Driver works so well through its use of music. Geography isn't about where your characters are in the location, as it moves too fast for us to ever really have any understanding of that. It's more about where our vehicles are in relation to each other, and you do that through rhythm. How often do we cut between the vehicles, between the drivers, between the wides, the reactions, the landmarks around them? When do we introduce an obstacle, a crash, a success, a failure, and so on? Cutting so much removes what is so important in a chase, which is that sense of fear, of tension. We're a passenger. Play on that. In a Michael Bay chase, you never feel the impending closeness of another vehicle, because you cut so much is forcing you into knowing, but not feeling the level of danger your characters are in. Car chases can and often should be the absolute highlight of your action film, a way to bring your audience into a situation they might actually be able to imagine themselves in. It's rare somebody could walk down the street with a machine gun, or know martial arts well enough to take on bad guys, but put their foot down in traffic enough to get the police after them. Pretty much any of us could put ourselves in a situation where that'd be possible. And that's what makes seeing this on screen all the more exciting. Find a reason to have your chase. Make it important to the story and the characters. And then film it in a way that feels right for the film, safely. In a way that brings us to the edge of our seats enough that if we had a break, we'd step on it. Thanks for watching. As always, if you enjoyed this and would like to help support this channel, please visit my Patreon. And see you again soon.